Well, this is the chapter, The Raven and the Fox. This is a poem, actually. This falls under the first unit of your classics book. That's called Fables and Folk Tales. We already learned a bottle of dew. And now we, we shall learn the poem, which is The Raven and the Fox. Actually, this is a well-known fable. This is a well-known story which appeared in many places in the form of cartoon and moral story. Remember, this particular poem will be called as will be called as didactic poem. What is didactic poem? Didactic poem is with moral. We shall find the poem which contains a moral. We shall call that as a didactic poem. We shall, of course, learn a moral lesson in this poem. Well, let us first understand simple thing here. We have a nice rhyme scheme here. You are not taught what is rhyme scheme. Rhyme scheme is basically determined by the pronunciation of the word in the last of, of each line. Look at here nicely. We shall find a pronunciation match. How is it? A limb. And him, do you think Lim and him is matching? Look at nicely when we pronounce Lim, actually, we make B silent, and that's why it matches like Lim, him. So it's like A, A. Whenever we shall start a rhyme match. We can begin with A and next line is matching. We shall continue with A. Look at your beak. Is it matching with the previous two lines? No. So we shall make it B. Beak, seek. Word, bird. Sing, king. Joke, broke, pride, eyed, no, glow, unwise. Fine, look at here carefully. Well, so we call this kind of rhyme scheme where first line matches with the second line, third line matches with the fourth line. We call this kind of rhyme scheme as couplet rhyme. Couplet rhyme. Now, look at carefully. We have this form in four line stanzas right now you see here goes first four lines then there goes next four lines and then there goes next four lines and then there goes next four lines so total we have 16 lines right now and we have four line Stanza, right? 
Do you know what is four lines tanja called as? Four lines tanja is called as what train? So today we learn some new things, right? We learn how to do rhyme scheme and what this style of rhyme scheme is called as and what is the name of a four line stanza? That also we learned. Now look at here carefully. In this poem, we have two characters. One is fox, another is raven. Remember, a fox is always presented in the folk tales as a clever animal. So in this poem also, the fox would be presented as a clever animal. And the raven is presented as the stupid one. And these two characters reflect similar kind of people in the society. In our society also, we have clever people like the fox and stupid people like the raven. And the moral tells that you should be aware of this fox-type personalities, fox-type people, fox-type characters. Look at, let us go through line by line. Mr. Raven, Mr. Raven was perched upon a limb. What do we understand by limb? Here it's called the branch of a tree. So, Mr. Raven was perched upon a limb. Look at the word perched. What is the meaning of perched? Sit on something high or narrow. Note it down. You don't know the meaning of this particular word. Perched meaning is sitting on something high and high or narrow. This is called parched. Look at next. So Mr. Robin was sitting on a limb, sitting on a branch of a tree. As we find here, take a look at And Reynard, the fox, looked up at him. Look at here. We have been given a name of the fox. The name of the fox is referred here as Reynard. And Reynard, the fox, looked up at him for the raven held in his great beak a morsel the fox would go far to see. So, it is said that Mr. Raven was sitting on the top branch of a tree and Mr. Raynard, the fox was looking at him. Why? For. For means it because. You can take the meaning as because the Raven held in his great beak, what do you understand by the beak? There is the hard part of the mouth with what? Birds catch their food, prey or something like that. That's called beak. Now, the raven held in his great beak. What did he hold? Did he hold? A morsel. What is a morsel? A piece of food. A piece of food. So what was the raven carrying in his big? The raven was carrying 
a piece of food and the fox would go far to seek and to get that to seek that to get that particular piece of food the fox was ready to go far the fox wanted to go far to get that particular piece of food said the fox in admiring tones the fox is admiring praising complimenting saying good words he said my word oh my god sir raven you are a handsome bird look at here the fox is here making flattery does anyone know the meaning of flattery this is called false praise false praise so the fox in a very admiring tone was making flattery of the raven what did the fox tell the raven sir raven look at the word sir he is addressing raven as sir and then he is addressing raven as handsome bird so with these two words the fox was doing flattery to the raven he said sir raven you are a handsome bird such feathers such good feathers you have if you would only sing the birds of this wood would call you a king and now he said uh sir raven you have such feathers you are so handsome a bird if you could sing a little then the birds of these woods woods in the sands forest birds of these woods would call you what a king he he, he has made a, made a plan the fox has made a plan what plan if the raven bird opens his mouth to sing what will happen that piece of food would fall down the raven who did not see the joke look at did not see it means did not understand the raven did not understand the joke and forgot that his voice was a, was just a crow now the raven the bird did not understand what joke was made by the fox and he forgot that his voice was a crow look at the word crow rough this is called rough his voice is a rough voice a crow's voice cannot be sweet voice a crow cannot be called as a singing bird look at and the crow did what he opened his beak in his foolish pride he was proud and that was a work of foolishness the raven was proud and we should call this to be his foolishness and down fell the morsel the fox had eyed with an and fell and down fell what the morsel the piece of food the fox had eyed what is fox had eyed the fox had targeted and the fox was so happy the fox said ha ha laughed the fox and now you know what did the fox say now you know what you know ignore sweet words that make you glow you should ignore sweet words that make you glow what is make you glow make proud you should ignore the sweet words that make you proud and then he says pride my dear friend is rather unwise pride is an unwise thing 
I am sure this teaching is quite a surprise. And I am sure your this teaching is really going to be a surprise to you. So you should never be proud on somebody's flattery. You should never ever go on reacting in somebody makes false praise. Be aware whenever somebody makes false praise to you. This is written by Jean D. La Fontaine. Look at here as Jean D. La Fontaine once. Would like to see Jean D. La Fontaine. So this is Jean de la Fontaine. He is a he is a poet. Remember, this man actually was from France, and he is a French fabulist. What does it mean by fabulist? One who writes fables, right? Mm -hmm. He belonged to 17th century and he is one of the mostly most read French poet, right? And this man lived 73 years and his fable we have in our book this time. Okay, so here's the end of the poem. Thank you.